Big news to report today. We have officially reached a preliminary agreement in a peace deal with Iran. The framework is now in place, and all that remains to finish the deal are ironing out some minor details. Huffington Post reports, quote, Europe will end all economic and financial sanctions on Iran under the future deal. The United States will end similar sanctions upon verification of the agreement by the IAEA, or the International Atomic Energy Agency. Iran will retain only one enrichment facility, Natanz, while the Fordo verified, si verified site, or fortified site, I'm sorry, will be converted into a scientific center. So, Understand what this means because it's very important. They're getting rid of centrifuges and their enrichment level is capped. Let me repeat that. Because you're going to hear a lot of bullshit on this main point in the coming days, I guarantee you. You're going to hear a lot of bullshit not only from Fox News, but also likely from... CNN and other so-called uh, mainstream sources, because what they'll do is say, we need to report both sides of this, so say what's actually in the deal, and say what the Republicans are spinning it as. So, again, just to be clear, to make sure you understand this, this is probably the most important part here, Iran is going to be getting rid of centrifuges, limiting their number of centrifuges, and also capping their enrichment level. Now, it's also not just, hey, take their word for it, we ha that's what we have the IAEA and the UN for. It's not like they're just going to self-report, like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> no, the IAEA gets to go in there and verify and check, and then they report back, and they, as an independent body, let us know exactly what's going on and if they're complying. By the way, that's the exact same thing that was going on during this interim deal. So now we know that's going to be the case for a long-term deal. Now, also, another very important fact, right up there with this other one, and you're going to hear a lot of bullshit on this one, too, in the coming days. The only nuclear energy they have is for their power grid and for research. I'll repeat that. The only nuclear energy and nuclear power that they have is for their power grid and for research. So there is no nuclear weapons program. I repeat, there is no nuclear weapons program. If you're annoyed by the fact that I keep repeating myself, understand that this probably isn't targeted at you. If you understand this and you comprehend this, then believe me, you're not part of the problem crowd. The problem crowd is all the idiots on the right who are going to think, Oh, wait, Obama's going to let them have nukes. That's what's going to happen. He's going to give them nukes and then they're going to nuke Toledo. That's what I'm sure of it. So Obama released a statement on this and he said, quote, I'm convinced that if this framework leads to a final comprehensive deal, it will make our country, our allies, and our world safer. The historic agreement could cut off every pathway that Iran could take to develop a nuclear weapon. The deal is not based on trust. It's based on unprecedented verification. And again, that's where the IAEA comes in. So, let's be clear again. There's absolutely, positively, no logical reason to be opposed to this. None whatsoever. It's a win across the board. It's a win if you're a, a citizen living in the U.S. It's a win if you're a citizen in Iran. It's a win if you're in the government of Iran or the government of the U.S. They get to have all the economic sanctions uh, lifted on them over time. They're phased out, and the U.S., uh, gets verification that we know that they're not creating a nuclear weapons program, and also now we we aren't as big of mortal enemies as we were, and that's going to aid in the fight against ISIS, because of course we align ourselves with the Shias in the fight against ISIS, the Sunni fundamentalists. So it's upsides all around here. Now, I already know what's going to happen. Not only is there going to be a, a propaganda onslaught from the right, so they're just going to flat out lie about this, but also what they'll do is just say, well, we just don't believe it. Like, that's going to be their whole thing. They'll either lie about it or say, we just don't believe it, or both of those things. Even though, again, you can't get it any better on paper. I just told you the parameters, they agreed on all the, the, the key points here, and the IAEA verifies. So there is no grounds on which you could say, well, I just don't believe it, or I'm just going to lie about it. No, that doesn't matter. So then, if they get called on that bullshit, which they won't, because the media will let that slide, 
Uh, then they're gonna move to, well, look, I mean, Iran. Pfft, it's Iran! Come on, it's Iran! That's gonna be their argument. It's Iran! Blah, blah, blah. Like, we can't trust them, it's Iran! Blah, 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 blah. Can't trust them, bomb them! It's always hilarious when I hear that argument, because I always think, how the fuck do you think they feel? Right? Like, we're here like, you know, we can't trust them. <laughs> These guys, they have a history of not acting right, let me tell you. And what does America have? Specifically when it comes to our relations with them. We overthrew their government in 1953, the CIA did it, and now they admit to it. They just declassified the papers about a year ago. We overthrew their government, we put in a dictator, all because the democratically elected leader said, I'm going to nationalize our oil industry and get the people of Iran rich. And we were like, oh, you can't have your own oil, what are you fucking crazy? No. <laughs> Gone. The CIA overthrew him and then we put in the Shah. And then that's what led to the increased radicalization. Everybody's so, oh my god, it's such, it's an Islamic fundamentalist place. What do you mean? We can't work with them. Why are they an Islamic fundamentalist place? They became more radicalized in the 60s because we put in a fucking puppet dictator who they didn't want. So they all turned to radicalization as a result of that. And that's why in the 1979 revolution, when they overthrew the government, it was basically an overtly religious government at that point. Now you guys already know I hate the religious uh, nature of that government, for sure. But you cannot deny the secular reality and the facts on the ground as to what led to the radicalization and to who was really at fault in the relationship between the U.S. and Iran all along. Again, that doesn't excuse the fact that they do, you know, they kill people for minor crimes and they really are uber-religious and they take away women's rights in many respects, not nearly as much as Saudi Arabia, but they do take away women's rights. All that stuff is a separate topic and one where we all agree how horrible it is. But in the relationship between the U.S. and Iran, we know the history of it and we know who's essentially at fault. And people are gonna say, well, the Ayatollah just fucking called America the Great Satan just a few days ago. So why would you do a deal with them? Why? That doesn't make any sense. But again, perspective. And what did we say about them? We only have elected representatives, Congress people, said, who have said in the past year, we should nuke Iran. Remember that? Duncan Hunter? And that's just one example! We'd have Louis Gohmert every day going around saying, well, I don't know why we're not bombing them yet. Let's just bomb them right now. So, for us to say, hey, we don't trust them, okay, fair enough, but they don't trust us! That's the whole point, as to sit down and talk it out. Of course you don't trust- You're not gonna sit down and talk it out with somebody who's already your ally. You don't need to talk it out. You need to talk it out when you guys don't like each other and you disagree. And there is no trust there. So, I, again, if you're against this, I don't know what to say to you. You're just not being rational. You're not being logical. That goes for everybody. Because there are gonna be some people on the left, too, who are against this. People in the Bob Menendez crowd. We're like, oh, yeah, Iran's terrible in every way, shape, or form. Can't do business with them. All right, then what the fuck do you want to do, tough guy? What, do you want to just bomb them? Because that's going to make it better, right? That's going to fix the situation? If the whole point of the sanctions was to get them to sit down at the table so that we get a nuclear deal with them. That's exactly what happened. But what's the argument now from the people who are opposing it? Uh, bomb them, I guess, still, even though we just got exactly what we wanted? I guess that's what we do?